I got a hunch something's going to happen I ain't going to like. You won't mind this. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, careful, Max. You know I'm delicate. <laughs> oh, there's a kind of a monotony about this. You're not hurt, are you? No. I'm getting so I enjoy it. <laughs> what you just saw... It should be a must for all of us detectives. Marty is a sucker for it. Oh, I got another little item that I think you coppers should know. Come on, Herman. You pardon me. Oh, it won't hurt you. Peter. Come on, let's try it. I have your gun. Yeah. What's the matter with you, Friday? It's all right. He's a minion of the law. <laughs> now, come on. You put the gun in my back. I'm walking along. I hope my insurance is paid up. <laughs> you see, it's all in the timing. Hey, will you get this Malamute off me? Relaxing, ain't it? <laughs> Let him up, Friday. Excuse me, boys, will you? Come along, Friday. Can't see anybody today, Alistair. Friday, Alistair will answer this time if you don't mind. Can't you get it through your head? Dogs don't answer doorbells. Yes, ma'am? I'm Mrs. Laurie. Is Captain McLean in? I'm sorry, ma'am. Captain McLean is not receiving today. He's consulting. Oh, but I'm an old friend. I'm sure he'd want to see me. I'll just wait. I know, ma'am, but uh, he said, don't let nobody in. If I don't let him in, he says, do let him in. I... Dog, where is you going? Innocent as a lamb, ain't you? Well, if you entertaining any ideas about getting into my department, you is treading on the edge of disaster. What are you looking at? Very cunning. Now, what is you looking at? So that's it. Why, you double-crossing canine? I'll disconnect you. Boss, I'm a man with patience. But that dog... Oh, never mind that. Who was at the door? That blamed dog has even got me forgetting what I'm supposed to be doing. All right, uh, all right. Who was at the door? There's a lady, sir. A lady? Yes, sir. All right, give me the blue coat and the polka dot tie. And your tan shoes? And the tan shoes. Yes, sir. At it again, right under my nose. You really should tell new servants about old friends, Captain McLean. Norma. Hello, Friday. We even brought you some roses. Ah, oh, they're lovely. You know, too few ladies bring me roses these days. Oh, Mac, old friend, it's good to see you. Ah, uh, it's good to see you too, Norma. You're just as beautiful as ever. The only time I mind not having eyes is when you're around. So let's sit down. Can't keep your sniffer out of roses, can you? <laughs> I'd forgotten that Friday was allergic to them. <laughs> so you've given up the theater for good, huh? Mm -hmm. And do you think uh, Laurie is worth it? Being married to Stephen is the most exciting career I ever had, Mac. He's a great man. Mm-hmm. A great man, indeed. He's one of the best scientific minds we have today. And heaven knows we need him. I'm glad you came to me, Norman. I think your father would have expected me to help you. You do need help, don't you? Well, yes, but how did you know? Oh, the tone of your voice, the way you tapped your cigarette. Serious trouble? Pretty serious. Need a detective? Oh, what I really need is someone to commit a murder for me. Oh, I can do that for you anytime you want. Who's the victim? Do you remember Paul Gerenti? Yes. The dreariest leading man you ever had. And when you told me that you were engaged to him, I wanted to take you over my knee. Well, he's back. He's back in my life again. He's a leading man in that summer theater near our home. 
And he's making love to my stepdaughter, Barbara. She's 17. She's very headstrong. Well, she's completely gone on him. She's Stephen's only child. He adores her. And for Stephen's sake, as well as for her own, I, I felt I simply had to tell her what a rotter Paul is. But Paul has poisoned her mind against me already. He's made her believe that I am still in love with him, that I'm playing the role of the discarded woman. Imagine me burning up with jealousy because he happens to prefer a younger woman. Well, that's what he's told her. And worse than that, he's convinced her that I married her father for his money. By now, of course, the child hates me. I, I don't know if I can help you or not. I'm only a gumshoe. But offhand, I would say one thing, though. What? You've got to have a talk with Geretti. Oh, Mac, you don't seem to understand at all. I loathe the man. My dear, you seem to be forgetting one thing. You're not just another woman that's been treated badly by Girenti. You're this girl's mother now. And your husband expects you to look after her. She's your responsibility. What would I say to him? Go to him. Tell him you're going to fight him. Show him that you mean it. Well, try it. If it doesn't work, we'll, we'll figure out something else. Oh, Mac. I never even come to see you except when I'm in trouble. <laughs> what are old friends for? Goodbye, darling, and thank you. I'll go to see him right away. That a girl. Goodbye, dear. Friday, show the lady to the door. you, Paul. Norma, darling. Here, wait a minute while I turn on the light. I'm the last one out. I was just leaving for town. There. With the footlights, we'll both feel at home. Oh, but uh, won't you sit down? Well, my flower, it is good to see you again. How's married life? Boring, I trust. I'm very happy, Paul. Splendid. Did you come for Barbara? She left some time ago. No, I didn't come for Barbara. I came to see you, Paul. So? How oh, very nice. You know, Norma, you're still very attractive. You age more cheerfully than I. I'm getting frightfully worried about my looks. Cigarette? You spoke just now of age. Barbara's only 17. Surely you can see that you could never make her happy. Don't hurt her, Paul. I have no intention of hurting her. Why should I hurt her? Because you're a vicious, self-centered man who's incapable of a decent, clean emotion. Because... I'm sorry I said that, Paul. Forgive me. No, you're not sorry, darling. You meant every word. I love Barbara, utterly and devotedly. If she'll have me, I'll marry her. All my life, I've waited for someone like her, beautiful and talented, alive as a breath of spring. Now that I've found her, I'll never let her go. Bravo. You have. Thank you, Hansel. Where's Mr. Lorry? I think you'll find him in the laboratory, madam. Oh? Oh, Stephen, I thought you promised me you'd be out of this old lab before I got home. <laughs> Darling, you're not going to work all night again, are you? No more night work. In fact, no more work. I finished. Oh, Stephen, you haven't. Oh, yes. It's all over now. That is, uh, all except one thing. What's that? I don't know if it'll work. A mere nothing. A trifle. When will you find out? Right away. How would you like to come on a little aeroplane trip? I'd love it. Where to? Can't tell. Big mystery. We fly south by private plane. Then, early in the morning, I'll leave you at the hotel for a few hours. And when I come back, 
I'd either be immortal or else just another crackpot who should have stuck to teaching. And we won't care which, will we? Darling, you've been an angel these past few months. Never once have you asked me what I was doing. Never even complained, no matter how badly I neglected you. <laughs> I can't tell you now what I'm doing. I don't want you to carry the responsibility of knowing. But I can tell you this. If it works, it will be an important contribution to the war. So you see, it's beyond my personal satisfaction. It'll work. I know it will. I wish you gave out Nobel Prizes. <laughs> we leave tonight at 7.30. So just pack an overnight bag. Oh, uh, Barbara won't be able to see us off. She has a date in town with some girlfriends. Hello, Barbara. Hello. My, your roses are lovely. Yes, Paul sent them to me. Going out tonight? I am. Would you mind too much telling me with whom? I wouldn't mind telling you at all, dear. Except that you know perfectly well. Your father thinks you have a date with some girls. If you think that's wrong, then by all means, tell him the truth. Mother. You and your father are such wonderful friends, Barbara. Don't you think you could be honest with him? In what way? Well, about Paul, I mean. Well, what about him, dear? Oh, Barbara, you know as well as I that you shouldn't be seeing him. Really, darling? I don't see why not. Because he's not good. He's hard and cruel. He's... How dreadful. Seems to me that your duty is perfectly clear, then. You should go to my father and tell him that I'm going out with a bad man. And when he asks you how you know he's a bad man, you tell him. Tell him that you know from personal experience, won't you? Barbara! Oh, why do you insist on misunderstanding me? I'm older than you. I made a great mistake. And I'm only trying to keep you from suffering as I did. Darling, do you want to know what I think? I think you've come to the same conclusion that I have. There isn't enough room in this house for both of us. I think you're trying to turn my father against me. You're trying to run my life, to dominate every movement I make. Oh, that isn't true. But you haven't won yet, my sweet, because I'm going to stay. And as long as I'm here, you're not going to be happy. I'm going into town tonight, and I'm going to have dinner with Paul Durante, alone. Well, you're not going to his apartment. Apartment? Operator, get me Murray Hill 44598, please. Hello, Paul. Look, darling, I've changed my mind about dinner. Let's not go to a restaurant. I think I like your original invitation better. Let's have dinner in your apartment. Why, of course I care, Paul, dearest. All right, I'll meet you at your apartment at 8 o'clock. Goodbye, sweet. Well, darling, we are off on the big adventure. Stephen. Yes, dear? I don't think I should go with you. What? I thought it was all agreed. Well, it's just occurred to me. We shouldn't be flying together. If anything happened, well, Barbara would be left all alone. I never thought of that. Of course, you would. It isn't easy being a stepmother, Norma. You've done a wonderful job. I haven't had a worry about Barbara since you came. You'll never know how grateful I am. Ready, Mr. Lowry. Good luck, darling. You're all the luck a man could ask for.
<laughs> Try to take hold of yourself. We must get away from here. Come on, darling. Why you? Barbara, you're asking me to run away with you? We've got to get out of here, don't you understand? I have no reason to run. Why should I run away? I didn't kill anybody. You don't think... I don't have to think. That... That upstairs proves everything. Oh, you don't know what you're saying. I had nothing to do with it. Then what were you doing here? I came to, to try to stop you. To tell Paul... He was like that when I came in. You're dull, darling. That's such a feeble story. But it's true. Barbara. Barbara, I couldn't. You're a liar. You killed him because you were jealous. You're going to pay for it. If you are innocent, you won't mind my calling the policeman. No, don't. You're terrified, aren't you? Barbara, think of your father. The newspapers would go mad. He couldn't bear it. That phony nobility of yours really makes me sick. All right. I won't call the policeman. All you have to do is one thing. Oh, anything. What is it? Leave my father's house. Barbara. Take your choice, darling. Well, shall I call him? Very well, I'll go. By tomorrow morning? Yes. Good. You understand, don't you, that if you're not gone by tomorrow morning, I call the police? Yes, I understand. Taxi! Oh, by the way, you might be interested to know that I was never really interested in Paul Durante. Oh, at first he amused me, but then I realized that he was sort of pathetic. So you see, my dear, you, you killed a man for nothing. Barbara, listen. No, Norm, I won't. Because I don't have to listen to you anymore. Good night. Now, well, let's see if we got the facts straight. Now, the body was lying on the floor in front of the fireplace. The uh, skull was bashed in. The door was ajar. There was a good fire burning in the fireplace. No signs of violence. Did anyone see you enter the apartment or leave it? Not that I know of. About how long ago were you there? It must have been an hour. That must have been about 8 o'clock. Is there anything else? I can't think of anything. And then Barbara came in and she thought you killed him. Mac, what can I do? I can't tell the police. No, no. A jury would massacre you. Well, go home and get some sleep if you can. Friday. Wake Marty up. <laughs> now you sit tight until you hear from me. All right, Mac. Uh, w wait a minute. In case I've got to call you, what is your phone number? Rossmore 555. Rossmore 555. Mm -hmm. oh, all right. Friday and I'll get on this right away. And don't worry. <laughs> I won't. Oh, it's you. You ought to take it easy when you wake a man up. You're liable to give him a bad shot. All right, all right. Don't rush me. Don't rush me. It's locked. Watch the stairs. Senate. About 18 by 26. Studio type. There's a big sofa alongside of you to your right. Wall on your right, big full-length window. Small table with a lamp on it. 
Big fireplace. Wall ahead of you. A glass cabinet. Door leading to a bedroom, I guess. Big chair. Over the chair is a picture of a... a reclining tomato. Wall to your left. Baby grand piano. Small round table with a lamp on it. Another chair. Wall behind you. Wooden chair. There's some kind of a screwball statue sitting in a hole in the wall. It stinks. Go on, go on. Well, that's about all, I guess. I'll take a look in the other room. Haven't you forgotten one important item? What? The body. Nobody here. Nobody. It's gone. She said it was in front of the fireplace. It ain't here now, Mike, I assure you. Any bloodstains on the rug? The rug is like the body, there ain't any. Not in front of the fireplace. Take a look in the other room. Okay. Polished floor. A lot of dust. Yeah. Seems to form a curved line. There was a rug here, and it was taken away recently, after he was killed. He ain't in there. They must have carted him away. I don't get it about the rug. I catch. Bloodstains. They're gonna get it cleaned. Did it ever occur to you that they might have used the rug to carry the body out? Right. Right! Get a hold of the janitor. See if you can get a line of Gerardi's friends who might have visited him tonight. Right. And I'll see if a stiff was taken out on the rug. No, don't mention anything about a stiff. You want us both thrown into jail? Don't you know what we're doing may be turned conspiring to defeat justice? Certainly I know it. Turn out the lights. Now, Friday, through the door. Let's see what we can find out about the late departed Mr. Gerenti. I want Rossmore, 555. My number? Murray Hill 4, 4598. Hello, Rossmore, 555. This is Gabriel. That you, Vera? Yes, I'm all right. I know, but somebody has to do the dirty work. It's part of the job. All right, I'll be back soon. Now, baby, stop worrying about me. Just a minute, I don't know yet. Call you back. Hey, get out of 
away. Now you better lay quiet, or I'll disconnect it for you. Thank you, sir. Now go get Marty, quick. Get up on your feet. Get up on your feet and face that wall. Come on, who hired you? <laughs> I bet you've been questioned a lot. You know how to keep your mouth shut, don't you? What's this? Marty, this is Gabriel. He gossips like a magpie. Charming. Mac, you're gonna have to give up popcorn. You get the dizziest prizes. Come on, Gabriel. Tell us what you did with the body. You ought to know better than to go around knocking people's brains out, Gabriel. What did he do to you? Steal a tire from you? All right. See if I can guess. You planned to kill Girardi someplace else. There was a sudden quarrel and you had to do it here to shut him up. You didn't want the body found here, so you took it away in a rug. You rang the bell that time, Max. Now maybe you'll tell us why you didn't want the body found here. Huh? All right. That means I've got to make a trip. Friday. Go get the harness. You take him up to our house. Entertain him. Maybe you can influence him to talk. Friday. Where you going? Up to Norma Laurie's house. Gabriel, telephone someone up there. If you find out anything, call me. Take me outside, Friday. You can turn around now, Gabriel. Well, you got the hat, Friday? There we are. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Is that guy blind? Demoralizing, ain't it? Oh, Mrs. Laurie, I thought you were going with Mr. Laurie. I changed my mind at the last minute. Is Miss Barbara home? No, madam. Miss Charlie Scott phoned a few minutes ago. There's an emergency rehearsal. Thank you, Hanson. The lyrics are just novelty, but novelty, they're trial. Here's Miss Larry, Miss Scott. Oh, hello, Barbara. I'm sorry I'm late, Charlie. That's all right, Barbara. Come down here a minute. I have something to tell you. The rest of you can relax. Come and sit down here. Something unpleasant has happened, Barbara. Paul Durant here. What about him? He's quit the show. He did? When? He telephoned at 7 o'clock. He didn't give us a moment's notice. He said he was going away for a while. <laughs> Barbara, I know you were interested in him, but perhaps it's just as well. He couldn't be depended on, and your new leading man is a much better actor. You have a brilliant career ahead of you, Barbara. You mustn't let anything come between you and the realization of that career. I'm very fond of you. I want you to know that what happens to you is of the deepest concern to me. Thank you, Chaley. All right, everybody. We we'll concentrate on the scenes between Miss Laurie and Mr. Boyd. Mr. Anderson, Mr. Bush, we won't be getting to you gentlemen tonight. You can be dismissed. Thank you, Miss Scott. All right, Mr. Boyd, start with the scene in the garden. Pick it up on... I'm afraid I'll never understand, Peggy. Come in. Well, is everything all right? All set, Captain. How did the lorry girl take the story about Gerenti? There's no trouble. Charlie will keep her rehearsing till we're through. Good. Come on. Let's get started. Quietly. We're alone in the house, aren't we? Well, not quite. 
Mrs. Lowry changed her mind. She came home at the last moment. That's not good. We are supposed to have the house to ourselves. Mrs. Lowry has gone to bed. She's a sound sleeper. We'll go ahead as planned. It's pretty risky. I think I... There's a paper in that safe. It's worth ten armored divisions to us. We're going to get it. Now. As you say, Captain. I wanted to talk to you. What about? About Gabriel. He hasn't called back yet, like he said. What? Now, don't worry about Gabriel. Something's happened to him. He would have called if he could. I know my husband. He's in trouble. I know he's in trouble. I'm going to help him. Vera, you're becoming hysterical. I don't like this. What if the police caught him? If he talks, we are finished. Gabriel won't talk. He's a good soldier. I don't care. I want to do something. I'm going to find him. And you can't stop me. Vera. Control yourself. That's better. Go ahead. Vera. Yes. Hide these two men in your room. I'll answer the door. Does Lori live here? Why, yes, sir, she does. Ah, oh, we made it, boy. Come on. Excuse me, sir, but may I ask who you are? Who are you? I'm Hanson, Mrs. Lori's butler. Well, I'm her uncle. I came to make a call. At this time of night, sir? Day or night, what difference does it make to a blind man? Oh, you're blind, sir? Blind as a bat. Excuse me, sir, I'm terribly sorry. Well, what is there to be sorry about? Many great men were blind, Milton, Homer, they were blind, weren't they? Yes, sir, but they complained about it. Oh, they did? Yes, sir. O oh, loss of sight of thee I most complain. Blind among enemies. Or oh, worse than chains, dungeons, or beggary, or decrepit age. <laughs> Milton, <laughs> say, you're quite a butler. <laughs> Tell Mrs. Lorry I'm here. Don't stand around spotting poetry. Yes, sir. Immediately, sir. What is it, Hanson? Mm -hmm. Mac, darling. Well, what kind of a two-bit perception is this, anyway? Your butler didn't even know I was coming. What is your Uncle Mac, an old shoe? I heard the taxi pull up and I... Yes, I... yes, yes. Well, does your Uncle Mac get a kiss or doesn't he? Of course, Uncle Mac. Where's that educated butler of yours? He's right here. Well, I'll send him away. I haven't seen you for two years. I don't want servants gawking in on a family reunion. That will be all, Hanson. Yes, ma'am. Shall we go in the living room, Uncle Mac? The rooms don't bother me. Just so they have a door. Two steps down here. Here, isn't there? We have an organ. Uh -huh. It's over here. Right on, Friday. Now listen carefully to what I have to say. But Nick. Who was in this house a couple of hours ago? Why? Hanson, myself, and the upstairs maid, Vera. Where does Vera come from? Barbara engaged her and the butler about two months ago. Uh -huh. Do you know anything about him? No, but I could find out. Oh, no. Anybody else at home now? No, Barbara's at the theater rehearsing. Rehearsing? This hour of the night? It was an emergency rehearsal. Oh. Oh, Mac, what is going on? Don't ask any questions now. Keep your eyes open, your mouth shut, and take orders. Have the maid, Vera, show me up to my room. Vera's probably asleep by now. You heard what I said about taking orders. Vera, I very distinctly warned you about trying to leave this house. Please, I want to go look for Gabriel. <laughs> I know something has happened. <laughs> Watch it. Vera, remember what I said.
Hanson, will you please ask Vera to show Mr. McLean to the second guest room? Excuse me, madam, but I'm quite sure that Vera has retired. May I show the gentleman to his room? I want the maid. I, a button came off my shirt and I, I wanted to sew it on. Well, if you'll pardon me, sir, I'm rather good at sewing on buttons myself. And if it comes to a pinch, can even darn socks. I'd be happy to do the job for you. Oh, horse collar. It's quite true, sir, really. Can you do a crow's foot? You... The what, sir? <laughs> I thought so. Don't even know the fundamentals. It's a design you make when you sew a button on. I bet you can't even hemstitch, can you? Ah, of course you can. You'd better get her, Hanson. Of course get her. If she's asleep, wake her up. She'll be grateful. Sleep is a form of unconsciousness anyway. Yes, sir. Come in. I'm Vera, the maid, sir. Oh. Well, Vera, will you turn the coverings down on my bed, please? Yes, sir. What's your last name, Vera? Hoffman, sir. Mm-hmm. You got a husband, Vera? job I want you to do. I want you to sew a button on that shirt. Now there's the needle and thread. It's all threaded. Did it myself. Pretty good for a blind man, don't you think? But I warn you, I want my buttons just so. You, you sew like a boiler maker. I can do better myself. Go on, get out of here. Sorry, sir. You should be. Good night, sir. Good night. Maybe now we can get a few of these pieces to fit, old pal. should be asleep by now. And the blind uncle won't be awake long. He had to pick this night to come visiting. Uh, it's all right. I think I'll go to bed now. You may be excused, Vera. Good night. Good night. I guess this is the greenhouse. I'd say you weren't warned, Vera. No. You... I'm sorry, Vera, but our job is bigger than you or Gabriel or anybody else. But he's my husband. Uh, 
Who's that? It's Hanson, the butler, sir. Oh, Hanson. Well, what are you doing up this hour of the night? I thought I heard a noise, sir, and I got up to investigate. Oh, I heard nothing. Nothing but the crickets. The same. Do you know you can tell the temperature of the air by counting the number of cricket chirps per minute? Oh, really, sir? Yes. Uh, is there anything wrong, sir? Uh, I mean, you're being up so late? No, no. And don't worry about me moseying around at night. I'm somewhat of a night owl. Insomnia. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, sir. Uh, perhaps if I might be so bold, sir, a sip of brandy might help you sleep. Now, my good friend Hanson, you're cooking with alcohol. It what, sir? I mean you're the perfect butler. Always considerate, watchful, and attentive. I'll hound my niece until she gives you a raise. Thank you, sir. Oh, and uh, getting back to the brandy. One of the few things I like to get back to. Do you suppose you could spare a bottle and put it beside my bed in case I get restless later? Why, uh, yes, sir. I think that could be arranged. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'll remember you in my will. Thank you, sir. Come on, Friday. What's the matter with you, Friday? Are you liverish or something? Come on. Friday, that nose of yours is going to get us both into trouble someday. I know yet, Vera. What do you want to do, draw a blueprint for him? Come in. Your brandy, sir. Ah, oh, welcome, messenger. Where is it? Where is it? Here, sir. Divine broth. Oh, Hot Garonne, 1904, if I'm not mistaken. Ah, a monumental vintage. <laughs> Your dog seems to have taken a dislike to me, sir. Oh, no, he's a bit crotchety. He hasn't been getting his exercise. Well, good night, Hanson. Good night, sir. I think I'll go to bed. Yes. And, Hanson, turn out the light, will you? Yes, sir. I think I'll read a while. What, sir? Well, sure, I read with my fingers. That's the blind man's advantage. He can read in bed with the lights out or <laughs> even under the covers if it gets cold. Oh, I, I see, sir. Good night, sir. Good night. He flatters me, Friday. There's enough sodium amatol in this to put three men to sleep. Who's there? Shh. Don't be frightened, baby. It's your Uncle Mac. I want to talk to you. Keep your voice down. What have you found out? Turn that light out. What is there in this house that somebody might want? Nothing that I know of. No, I don't think you're telling me the truth. Now, come on, tell me. Now, you're forcing me to tell you some very unpleasant news. Oh, Mac. Sorry, Mac. What is it? Vera is dead. She was killed because she knew too much about the Gerenti murder and was going to talk. Two people have been killed. Their deaths are linked up in some way with something that is in this house. Now, come on, tell me. It's in the safe, in the library. It's the formula of Stephen's new invention, the one he's trying out tonight. If it works, he's going to turn it over to the government. It's so important Stephen didn't even give me the new combination. I'm going to get the police. Oh, no, that's the worst thing you can do right now. Well, why? If we call in the police now, they'll get the gang downstairs, yes. But there are others, and they're following your husband. Well, Mac, what are we going to do? There's nothing we can do but stall. Stall until Stephen gets home. Then we'll send for some help. Until then, well, they can pull the switch any time they want to. Run it again, Barbara. With just a little more anger. I'd been told there were selfish and greedy men like you in the show business, but I didn't believe it until now. I 
I was only repeating what Hanson said. He was worried. It wasn't coming off as we planned. It sounds as if you'd lost your heads. Get back to the house. Tell Hanson we'll meet in Vera's room in 30 minutes. Yes, ma'am. I'm not going to miss any opportunity to put this song over. That's better, but it's just a little bit ragged. I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm tired. Let's call it a night and get a fresh start in the morning. Oh, that's music to my ears. It's the hay for me. Good night. Barbara, I wonder if you'd mind putting me up for the night. I'd enjoy a little luxury for a change. Of course, I'd love to. Just a minute, I'll get my coat. Thank you, darling. I assure you it was absolutely necessary. She was becoming hysterical. I'm afraid I don't agree. You could have kept Vera in her room, guarded her. Impulsive killing makes more danger than it cures. And what about Gerenti? That was different. He became emotional about his job. He fell in love. If we hadn't acted, everything we'd accomplished, the theater, our connection with the Laurie home through the girl, every one of our legitimate fronts would have been destroyed. We disposed of Gerenti out of necessity. And so did we with Vera. She was left on the highway several miles away. It will look like a hit and run accident. Brilliant. Gabriel invents a technique and you use it to kill his wife. Have you thought what a danger he'll be when he finds out? Excuse me, madame, but I was in charge at the house here. It was my responsibility. Things weren't going as planned. Mrs. Lowry returned. Vera got out of hand. The blind man arrived Why and... Why, yes, the blind man. You checked on him. What harm can there possibly be in a blind man? Absolutely harmless. I gave him a sleeping potion and... Victor, call New York. Have them check on this man. What's his name? Why do that? It's What's perfect. his name, Hanson? McLean. Duncan McLean. Check every Duncan McLean in the telephone book. Yes, madam. You seem to have forgotten fundamentals, Captain. I must remind you, madam, that my record entitles me to respect. And I must remind you that I am in command. And you'll do as I say. That's your command, madam. Stand watch in the hall. leaving immediately. He should be here in a half an hour. Hurry. By tomorrow, this place will be swarming with government guards.
come over here and listen to my pipe. <laughs> but it's terribly late, sir. Ah, Hanson, is it ever too late for good music? <laughs> here the whole world is aflame, and you ask me to deprive it of good music. Oh, no. Hanson, here. Yeah. Yes, yes, sit down here, yes, sit down. Now, you, you're a man of culture, my dear friend. Perhaps you have some uh, favorite selection. You just name it and I'll play it. My repertoire is very extensive. Don't you think you'd better go to bed, sir? Oh, Hanson, you're an old stick in the mud. Hanson. Yes, miss. What's going on here? Watch it to you. It's Mrs. Laurie's uncle, miss. Uncle? Well, I've never heard of any uncle. No? Well, who are you, pray? <laughs> Why, he's drunk. From the tone of your voice, I take it that you are my niece's stepdaughter. Uncle Mag! Lorma, oh, my dove! <laughs> Welcome. Well, this promises to be a gallant occasion. What's this man doing in this house? I never knew you had an uncle. Well, there are a lot of things that you don't know, my little girl. And the first thing that you should learn is to respect your elders. <laughs> Otherwise, somebody's liable to paddle your canoe. Why, he's blind. Oh, clever girl to see that I don't see. Why wasn't I told that he was coming? I didn't know myself. Well, get him to bed. Oh, I, I think I understand. With a relative in the house, it would be bad taste to carry on a family quarrel. Oh, Barbara. Well, it won't work, Norma. A drunken uncle. Who's drunk? Where's the chalk line? Show me the chalk line, that's all. Now, don't hold on to me. Let me go. Now, there's the chalk line, you see? <laughs> there you see. Hanson, where are you? Here, sir. Oh, Hanson, what have you been doing? Hanson, you've been at the grape. <laughs> you ought to be ashamed of yourself, Hanson. Staggering all over the place and falling in everybody's lap. Yes, sir. Uh, perhaps, madam, if I got some coffee, it might sober him up. Sober yourself up, you rum pot! Yes, sir. Mmm, <sighs> coffee. <laughs> That's a dazzling idea. We'll get some coffee and sandwiches, and we'll gather around, and we'll, we'll have a sunrise concert. Now, what do you say, Friday, my friend? <coughs> ah, Norma, how about you? Barbara must get some sleep. She's worked very hard tonight. Oh, who are you? This is Charlie Scott, Uncle Mac, a playwright. A playwright? Oh, you, you're just the person I want to see. You, you, uh, you, come here, I want to talk to you. I got the greatest idea for a play. <laughs> no, I'm a liar. I got three great ideas for a play. Oh, tremendous. Let me tell you about it. It won't take more than an hour. Not now, Mr. McLean. Some other time. Oh, Any time you say is all right with me. Well, how about an encore? What? Oh, good. Now, this is the quintet from Martha. Gorgeous music. Don't you like it, Norma? Well, I'm going to bed, and I want it quiet. Come along, Uncle Mac. Let's get to bed now. Hmm? Is there anything I can do, Mrs. Laurie? You don't care for my music. Of course I do, dear, but not... Well, now. go away for me. Don't bother me. I'm going to play it till the sunrise. Oh, no, you're not, Uncle Mac. Come on now. You insist? I insist. Bourgeois dullards. Here's your cane. Right. Go along upstairs now, and I'll get some aspirin for you. Uh, uh, but with brandy. Aspirin and brandy. Never mind that now, Hanson. Watch the steps. Two up. If he drank enough brandy to make him that drunk, what happened to the 
sleeping potion. Madame, I'm quite sure. Cut the telephone wires. Hurry. Yes, madame. I had to get you away to tell you that Stephen phoned. He's coming home. Good. Well, now we can send for the police. It's dead. Obviously. Now sit tight and don't say a word. I've got an idea. It's a hundred to one shot. And don't pay any attention to what I say. Come on, Friday, outside. All right, if that's the way you feel about it. You think I'm drunk, eh? Well, I'm not. I'll guarantee you that. I just feel exhilarated, that's all. I got a little job for you to do. Right on. It's on you now, Friday. Get behind the bed. Oh, I didn't hear you knock. Your drunken act didn't fool me or anybody else, McLean. You won't interfere again tonight. Keep an eye on him, Boyd. If he gets playful, you know what to do. All right. Rather a hectic night, eh, Boyd? Do you mind if I play a little solitaire? Solitaire? Yeah. No, I don't mind. Oh, thank you. You like cards, Boyd? Once in a while? <laughs> What's so funny? I was just thinking, never play poker with a blind man. Not with his cards, anyway. Why not? And his cards are marked. Really? Oh, sure. They're marked in Braille. So he can read his cards. Of course, the hitch comes when the blind man is dealing. <laughs> he knows what the other person has. Well, that's very interesting. Uh, come here, I'll show you. I'll call the cards as I deal them out. Now, there's the Jack of Diamonds. There's the eight of clubs, there's the four of hearts, there's the deuce of spades, and the eight of spades. Is that right? That's wonderful. <laughs> Come here, I want to show you a trick. Now, I'm going to deal out three piles of cards. Yeah. I want you to look at the top card on the end pile. You got it? Yes, I got it. I remember them now. Now, uh, put your hands flat on the cards. Go ahead. <laughs> this is really a great trick. Uh, let's see. Now, the trick is this. Come here, up on the window. Home. I want you to get Marty. Do you hear me? Go on home. You're on your own now, boy. Go on. Out. made very good time, thereby earning yourself an extra couple of bucks. You must have had some good luck tonight. The best. Now, if you play a little tune in that horn, you can make another dollar. You'll wake up the whole joint. That's the idea. Go ahead. 
very talented. Good night. Stephen, darling. Stephen, listen. Hello, Father. Hello, Jake. Stephen, listen to me. Darling, you're trembling. I can tell you why she's trembling, Father. Stephen, you must get away from here at once. You're giving a bad performance, Norma. Oh, Barbara, your father's really in danger. We're all in danger. We must get out of this house right away. Norma, what's happened? Excuse me. Will you please step into the library, Mr. Lorry? Not just now, Hansen. What the devil's going on here? It will all be explained in the library. Will somebody please tell me? Mr. If... Lorry! No trouble, please. I is this some sort of a joke, Chaley? Stop gaping and do as you're told. Do as they say, Stephen. I presume you know what we're after, Mr. Lorry. I have a pretty good idea. Dad! Got the blind man trying to get away. Where's Boyd? He's... He's upstairs trying to figure out a card trick I showed him. See what happened, quickly. <laughs> Norma, who is this man? Oh, you must be Stephen Lorry. Well, I'm your wife's long lost uncle. Duncan McLean, call me Uncle Mac. But don't be dismayed. I'm one of those relatives don't stay more than a month. We've had enough of this nonsense. What do you mean, nonsense? I don't like your tone, Miss Scott. I have a perfect right to shake hands with my nephew. What's the matter with me, anyway? Am I a leper or something? Sit down and keep quiet, McLean. Boy, How'd you like that card trick I showed you? Fouled you, didn't I, Boyd? Bush, stand watch outside. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Lorry, I want the combination of that safe. Well? I'll have to look for it. I changed it just before I left. Let me see. 4, 14 right, 3, 24 left. Uh, no, no, that was the old one. I was hoping you'd be reasonable, Mr. Lorry. I hate to ruin that nice safe. Can't leave a lot of messy evidence around? I can't remember, I tell you. I've forgotten it. That's well, quite conceivable, Miss Scott, a man forgetting. Start in. Take a look at this. Is it? You're, you're sure, Victor? Quite sure, madame. Check it thoroughly. We've got to be positive. Yes, madame. <clears throat> Hurry up, Victor. It's almost daylight.
What's the matter? The final step is missing. We'll be weeks working it out. And even then, we might be wrong. We're not going to finish it. Mr. Laurie has it in his head, and he's going to write it out for us. I have no intention of writing it down, Miss Scott. Now you're being heroic, Mr. Laurie. I intend to get that formula. The lengths to which I will go depend entirely on your will to resist. Do you understand? You're wasting your breath. I'd really rather not be violent. All right, Hans. Just a moment, Miss Scott. There's no need for all this, and you know it. Once you get a hold of the complete formula, you won't let us live ten minutes. You have no intention of allowing witnesses to stop your activities. Take him out. You're mighty smug, Miss Scott. But you made one mistake in this well-oiled scheme of yours. Yes? Yes. You slipped up on the killing of Paul Girendi. It may even surprise you to know that I have positive proof that you ordered him to be killed. What positive proof do you have? A man by the name of Gabriel. Go on. He's now being held in New York. Just before you cut the phone wires, I got word to him that his wife was murdered. And who did it? Gabriel is out for revenge. If I'm not home in time for breakfast, the police will be notified and Gabriel will start talking. What's your proposition? Life is sweet, Miss Scott, even to a blind man. If you let us go, I'll try and persuade Mr. Laurie to turn over the balance of the formula to you. But mind you, we must have positive proof that you will let us go unharmed. Boy, take Mr. McLean to the basement. Go ahead, don't be afraid. Come on. Well, there's no use of wasting your energies. You can't influence me. Hanson. Yes, sir. Watch these people. Gabriel's here. What? You don't suppose he knows, do you? Let me do the talking. Yes, madame. Only Gabriel. Yes, madame. Only Gabriel. The rest of you stand watch. I've been through the mill. A blind man and another guy caught me in Gerenti's apartment. Where's Vera? She isn't here, Gabriel. She went looking for you. She did, but she didn't know where I was. Yes, I tried to tell her that, but, but you know, Vera, she can be very stubborn. We tried to stop her, but she walked to the station. If it's all right, I think I'd better go look for yes, her. Yes, as soon as we've finished. But I'm kind of worried. Vera's all right. We need you here. Well, all right. Stand watch outside. Yes, madam. The key, please. You handled it admirably, madam. Thank you, Captain. If the blind man should get a chance to talk to Gabriel, it might be unpleasant. Yes, madam, it might. Got a chance, blind man. That's a thirty eight caliber belly gun you got there, Hanson. It's a six shooter, and you fired your last shot. Where are you? In the dark, Hanson. In the dark. 
in my kingdom. They're asking me if they should go on, Mr. Lorry. I'm afraid I've made a mistake. You're a brave man, and I'm convinced I'll get nothing from you. So you leave me no choice. They have nothing to do with this. Better take a good look at your wife, as she looks now. give it to you. Don't give in to them, Stephen. Let them do anything they like. Keep a tight grip on that dog. If he gets away, he may tip them off. And we grab those guards off quietly so we can get inside and surprise the others. And we don't want any innocent people getting hurt, you understand? I'll take the east side. What do you want me to do? You better stay here so you won't get hurt. What do you mean? I can take care of myself. I saw the dog outside. Is the blind man loose? No, Hanson took him to the basement. Get Hanson. I want him up here. Yes, ma'am.
Mac, it's you. Ah, this is getting kind of monotonous. Get the car, Marty. These people are going to the airport. They're going to Washington. Right. The Colonel's Jeep coming up. <laughs> <laughs> you sure you won't come along, Barbara? Uh-uh. Aren't you going, Barbara? No, Uncle Mac. A new man has come into my life. And I'm going to stay here in New York to see what it is about him that intrigues me so. Oh, what's he like? Oh, he's big and strong, and he's the kind of a man that tells women what to do and makes them like it. In fact, he told me that if I didn't behave, he'd paddle my canoe, and he'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you're being selective. Come on, let's get these elderly people down to the airport. Here we go. <laughs> After that, we'll do the town. Oh, not tonight, old boy. You're on your own tonight, fellas. Just so one of you stay home and watch the place. Yes, sir. Well, I don't know about you, dog, but me personally, I'm off to the Harlem Squash and Tennis Club to meet my dream gal. You know, what am I telling you this for? Why, that's romance. You wouldn't know nothing about that. Well, I'm off. You stay here and watch the house. Why, you wolf. <laughs> 